We're down in my basement today, and we're going to be talking a little bit about a, building an IT lab and how to do that really inexpensively and, and how much it costs. And one good question might be, you know, why is an IT lab so important? And really, if you're like me and you're just learning the IT industry, I'm taking my A-plus right now, I've done the uh, Google IT Administration Certificate, it's really important to have a hands-on way to practice and reinforce what you're learning. Uh, so having an IT lab is great because it's a dedicated place where you can mess with computers, you can do all the things that you're learning about and practice it in a safe environment where you're not going to break anything that's important to you. Uh, and for me, the way I'm setting this up is uh, this last year, unfortunately, I had a relative of mine pass away. And one of the things I collected from him uh, was this computer. Now, when I looked at it, this computer was assembled. It's a Dell. It was assembled at the end of 2010. So it's about 11 years old. And in 2010, when this thing was put together, it wasn't a great computer. It's the very first generation Intel Core i3. Two cores, four threads, 3.2 gigahertz, I think. It's got six gigs of RAM in it. This is an old, old, old PC. Now, when I first started it up to go from, well, not when I first started it up, but I started it up and I got all the software up to date and everything else. And as I was using it, currently, when I go from a cold start to my desktop to where I can actually open an application, it takes about seven minutes. Now, seven minutes is a long, long time. So for a lot of people that might look at this computer and go, oh, that thing is junk, you might as well just throw it out. You're never gonna be able to use it for anything. But sometimes I think what people miss is a lot of the problem with these old computers isn't so much the CPU or the memory of the motherboard, but a lot of the slowness comes down to the hard drive. When I run this PC, the hard drive is, is pretty loud. Uh, you can hear it clearly through the case. So I'm willing to bet that a big chunk of the problem with this computer is just that the hard drive is, is dead slow. Uh, it's just an old hard drive and it's, it's struggling. So what I thought I'd do, because I want to build a lab and I don't have money to really sink into it, lots of it. So I kind of collected a lot of spare parts. So I have this computer I got from my family member. I have an old 1080p monitor that I've had for seven, eight years I'm not doing anything with. Uh, I got a, a keyboard and a mouse kicking around and I've got two SSDs. I've got a 60 gigabyte Kingston SSD and I've got a 240 gigabyte SanDisk SSD. So what I'm going to do today is I'm taking the hard drive out of this thing. I'm going to put in these two drives. The 60 gig drive I'm going to install Ubuntu Linux on and the 240 gig hard drive I'm going to install Windows on again. And I'm going to see how big a difference it makes in the operation of this computer. Uh, because the fact of it is when you look at computing now, computers have become so powerful that for most of the things you do in an IT learning environment or in a business environment, even a low-end modern computer has way more power than you really need. Uh, you know, if you're fiddling around with Bash or PowerShell or, or you're running some IT administration tools or even running virtual machines, you don't need tons and tons of power. Uh, even if I didn't have all this stuff kicking around, this 240 gig SSD, you can get something similar on Amazon now for about $30 or $35. This computer is worth maybe maybe $75. Um, if you go on Amazon for $150 to $200, you can get a third, fourth, or fifth gen Intel Core i5, um, which is way more powerful than this thing for just a couple of hundred bucks. Uh, this keyboard I have at Staples here in Canada, it's $19.99, and the mouse you can buy for like $9. So even if you have nothing kicking around, you can go to Goodwill, you can go to you know, used computer places, uh, you can look for, for sales, and you can pick up you know, the equivalent for not a whole lot of money. And I recognize that for a lot of families, you know, a couple hundred dollars here or there could you know, be a lot. Um, but you can really, if you're frugal and, and you use your resources, you can put together a functional IT lab uh, for not tons of money. Now, it may not do absolutely everything you're interested in, but for a lot of the stuff, is, especially as you're just starting out, for a lot of the stuff you might want to learn, this can work quite, quite nicely. You want to do some programming in Python? There's nothing wrong with something like this. It'll work just fine. And we're going to see that as we kind of go through this install and get to the end. We're going to see how much more quickly it boots up. So keep in mind, to get to the point where I can open an actual application currently is about seven minutes. So when we put these drives in, uh, we're going to take a look at, at how much it speeds things up and just how effective this computer becomes. Uh, the other thing that's going to be interesting is I've never done a cold install of Windows, like a, a brand new install, where I was relying on the online authentication. 
when I fired up this PC, it says it's been authenticated online. So technically I should be able to install the same type of Windows, in this case, Windows 10 Pro, and it should authenticate automatically once it, it connects online. So we're gonna see whether that's true or not. I do have a key if I need it. Um, but that's gonna be kind of the other interesting thing on this build is it's gonna be my first introduction to installing Windows under the online authentication regime. So all that having been said, I'm gonna start tearing this apart and uh, let's see what we can do with it. One of the things I like about these old commercial grade PCs, uh, like I say, this one's a Dell, but I've worked on tons of PCs that were sort of ex-bank PCs, you know, ex-corporate PCs that were built by Lenovo and others. Is that even though they're not built to be pretty, the design inside is actually super efficient. The cables are all well restrained. Um, you know, the places they put things like this hard drive slot make sense, and they're usually quite easy to work on. And one thing you're going to see me do here that's maybe not a best practice practice is I'm actually going to mount my SSDs with double-sided sticky tape to the bottom of the case. The reason I'm doing that, this case doesn't have a spot right now to put a three and a half inch drive in. Because SSDs don't have moving parts and they're very, very light, I found that double-sided sticky tape is fantastic if you're not concerned about it being pretty, which in this case I'm not. Now what I do first is I just wipe down the drives and the area I'm adhering them to with a little bit of rubbing alcohol to get off any residue. When you do that, that double-sided sticky tape is going to stick like snot to a gray wool blanket, and those SSDs aren't going to go anywhere. Now, if ever you do need to get the SSDs out of here again, uh, I recommend you don't try to yank on them to get the double-sided sticky tape up. What I do is I take an X-Acto blade and try to cut underneath, or I take a piece of fishing line, wrap it between two fingers, and work it back and forth underneath the drive to cut the tape that way. That way works really excellently. And what I've done, I've just positioned these such that there's as much room as possible between them to fit the cables into the proper ports, but close enough that I can run it off of one power cable. So as you can see, I've got one power cable with two uh, SATA connectors here. Uh, so I want to have both of those SATA connectors reach each drive so I don't have to run another cable. Okay, so what we have now is pretty straightforward. I've got my two discs here and here that are double-sided tape down to the bottom of the case. I've got my power cable running between the two. I've got my two SATA cables running to the motherboard. I've taken the old hard drive out already and I have Windows install media set up on a USB drive so that I can install Windows right from the boot. So that's what we're going to do next. And uh, before you know it, we're going to have a running PC. <clears throat> okay, so at this point, uh, I've installed Windows 10. It's on my bigger drive. I've given it a few minutes just to sort of sort itself out to uh, install everything that needs installing. I think we're ready to do a new test. Now remember previously it took seven minutes for this computer to boot up from off, cold start, uh, to a Windows desktop where I could actually open anything. In that case, I use Google Chrome. In this case, I'm going to use Microsoft Edge. What we're going to do now is run a quick test and see if that has gotten any better. And start.
And so there you go. From an absolutely cold start off to having my desktop up and Microsoft Edge open was 34 seconds. So the only thing I've changed in this computer is the hard drive. I took out the old mechanical hard drive, put in an SSD, everything else is the same. Again, it's a first generation i3 and i3 550, six gigabytes of RAM. Now based on that performance, clearly this is still a usable computer. I can use it for fooling around. It can turn into an IT lab for me. And the nice thing about it is, you know, yeah, I got it for free, but this whole setup isn't worth more than a couple hundred dollars probably. So, you know, I'm okay breaking it. I can do whatever I want to, uh, you know, learn more about uh, operating systems and about computers and about networking. And if I break something, it doesn't matter because there's nothing on here that's personal. I can reinstall Windows or Linux as many times as I want. Uh, and if I end up totally breaking it such that I can't recover, well, I'm not really out anything, right? So uh, this is great, a uh, great setup, I think, for getting started for somebody like myself who's just learning uh, A plus and, and some other things that I need to sort of get under my belt. But I wouldn't hesitate to recommend to anybody go out and find an old computer, something cheap. Uh, I know in my city, our recycling centers, they have dedicated areas for recycling electronics and those places are full of old computers. Grab a couple out of the bin. If there's stuff broken on them, you can swap parts between and come up with something that works. Uh, you know, I think I'll get lots of use out of this and I will make a future video explaining what I do and exactly how much performance I can squeeze out of it and what I'm able to accomplish. Uh, but outside of that, yeah, I've got a nice running machine. The next thing I'm going to do is install Linux on the other hard drives so that I have a dual boot set up. And then I'm away to the races. I can set up my IT lab. Thanks so much for watching. It's been a slice. I hope you get some ins inspiration from this. And if you do, leave me some comments down below.